Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and it's time for the weekly comic book review. That's right, everybody. Thanks for checking out the video. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups. This is the weekly comic book review. It's the show where I read a lot of comic books, and I'll let you know what I thought about them. And still, no printed comic books are available. This probably is going to continue for a few more weeks. However, there are some digital first or digital only um, comics that came out this week. So I went ahead and read some. That's why this video is a little bit late. I didn't have much time to read them all at once, so it had to be over a couple days. So better late than never. Here is the weekly comic book review though for April 8th. My pick of the week is Villain Takes All. Villain Takes All was a really, really neat book. It's from Loophole Comics. It's available on Comixology. I got all of these on Comixology. Um, really cool book. I really liked it. It's kind of like a battle royale for super villains. So all these super villains kind of get put in the situation and they go through all these different battles until there's only one left. And then they kind of keep going back and over and over again. But it was really, really fun. The artwork was crisp and clean, and I really liked it. It had vibrant coloring, great lettering. I just thought this was a very great debut issue. Um, it's written by Mike Exner III. Kendall Good is the artist. Mark Dale is the colorist. And the lettering by Micah Myers. I really did like this one. I highly encourage you to check it out. If you're fiending for new comic book releases like I am, that's definitely one to check out. But another Comixology original that I checked out, this is a graphic novel. On the first week, it's available for 99 cents, but if you have Comixology Unlimited, you can check it out. It's called Quarter Killer. Quarter Killer was really nifty, and I really did like it. It was a bit challenging. It was a bit hard to get into at first, but as the story progressed, I really fell in love with the characters and with the concept of the story. It's kind of like a futuristic, cyberpunkish type weird thing going on. It's about this dude named Quarter Killer, and he's a former corporate hacker who now is a basically like a like a hacker Robin Hood type figure. And he's got this whole cast of characters. This was really, really cool. It's written by Vita Ayala and Danny Lore. I'm a big fan of their work, especially when they work together. So I definitely wanted to check this out. Jamie Jones's artwork is very different. It's very dynamic. And the coloring, the coloring is absolutely top notch. And that coloring, of course, is also done by Jamie Jones. It's got a very cool, free, loose, and hip hop feel to it. And it was very cool and really interesting. And new content for such a cheap price and free if you have Comixology Unlimited. I don't think you can really beat that. I read this new one called North. It was kind of whack. It started off pretty interesting. This person's kind trying to do a solo expedition to the Arctic, to the North Pole, or something like that, and this big like Yeti monster like shows up and attacks him. And then all of a sudden he runs into this other dude who's like living in a cave or whatever. The story completely lost me at that point. It's a black and white comic. It was interesting enough, but it completely jumped the gun on me in the second half of the book. But I really thought that the first half was pretty freaking solid. There's one called Inferi. Number one, that sounded really interesting to me. It's about this college professor who has been testing his students for the last 15 years to solve some, to decode some kind of a thing. And if they can, then he's going to invite them to join his secret organization where they go out and fight all the mythological creatures, all the monsters, vampires, werewolves, fairies, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, cool concept. Execution, though, was pretty weak. It didn't keep me enthralled. It didn't do anything original or unique. And it was just kind of basic and boring. There there was another one called Fab that I read. It had some really, really cool artwork. Fab is from Story Worlds. The artwork is absolutely spot on. The artist uh, is Julian Perry. Max Gadney is the uh, writer of this one. The story was really hard to get into, but it was a really interesting concept. The basic concept is people are now using, in the not too distant future, they're using 3D printing technology to make clones of people, right? And there's all kinds of bands and things are outlawed and it's restricted and all kinds of stuff. So there's a this whole crime um uh, this whole like segment of crime, the section of crime that has arisen out of this stuff. And so it's about these two detectives that are going after it. The artwork was so good. It's a black and white comic book. The artwork was dynamic. It was kinetic. It felt like, 
kind of felt like Akira to me almost a little bit. Really did like the artwork, but the story was really, really hard to kind of get into. But the basic premise and gist is that there's this, like, group of people trying to 3D print a clone risen Christ. And it was really kind of bonkers and cool. And it was interesting enough, but the execution and the writing and the dialogue just wasn't there. Wasn't really clear throughout about the story. It was okay, but the artwork was top notch. You'll be seeing that cat do more work in the future, I guarantee it. I checked out one called a y, uh, from YM called Balancing Act. Um, it was okay. It's kind of like Quantum and Woody just a little bit. It's about these two characters. One of them was a bully to the other one back in school. They run into each other at an old friend's house. Some crazy sci-fi stuff happens. They wind up getting kind of entangled together so that every so often one of them will just teleport to where the other one is. So that maybe it happens when one of them's taking a shower and the other guy's trying to like say goodbye to his wife or something like that. So it was an interesting enough idea, but it was kind of clunky and it didn't really work its way through very well. And I think Quantum and Woody is a much better um, kind of take on that type of story. There was another one called Harrier that I read that I really, really liked. I thought it was pretty cool. It's about this woman who is a detective or something like that and she's being offered the chance to become basically a superhero. They developed this like mech super suit for her to wear. Um, but the story was actually pretty cool. It had great dialogue, it had cool artwork, and it had a nice flow all the way through. That one was called Harrier, and I really did like that one. I thought that was pretty cool. There was one called Planet Slammer that blew me away. If you like really weird, quirky, fun, indie type stuff, check out Planet Slammer. This book was really, really fun. I had a lot of fun with it. It's completely done by Matt Chi. The art, it's a very, it's a style that you're going to have to, it's, it's, it's kind of like beer. It's an acquired taste. But if you like stuff like, I don't know, if you like What's that cat that does Love and Rockets or, or the Gilbert Hernandez, I think, too? Um, if you like that type of style, it was a really cool, quirky book. It's basically about this planet where they send all the bad guys to. So it's like a prison planet, and they all just kind of mosey and meander around and have formed their own gangs and everything. And then one badass woman who's put the majority of those people there gets framed for a crime and sent there. And, of course, everybody is after her, but I thought that one was really, really cool, especially if you're into the more quirky, independent side of things. There was one I read called Alpha Mode Uncanny Republic Number Zero. I felt completely lost when I read this book. It says it's an issue number zero, but I felt like I had already missed a whole chunk of the story. I was not interested in the characters. I barely even remember what it's about. They have these, like, marks, and they can activate powers from it somehow. I don't know. That one did not keep me interested whatsoever. Action Lab released a few this week, so let's run through them. Burning, Ru Burning Rubber was a really interesting one-shot digital release that I really did like. I thought it was pretty cool. It's got two different stories in it, which are actually two different sides of the same type thing. Um, it's a crime story. It's gritty. It's got a it doesn't end in a very positive light, I'll tell you that, but it was good and it was gritty. But it's about this dude who um, has, because of unfortunate circumstances, is now having to go and pr pr pursue a life of crime, or at least one time, and it doesn't go very well. And you get the same story almost from two different perspectives. And I thought that was a really neat way to tell that story. Sweetheart number two released, and I really liked issue number one, so I definitely wanted to check out issue two. It's available digitally, and I loved it. I thought it was great. It continues the story the way it leaves off from Sweetheart number one. It's a story about these monsters in this town that can attach themselves to a person, and they will follow that person throughout their entire life until they can finally find a way to kill them and eat them, right? But... There's this tonic that people can take to kind of keep them at bay. So they're, it's always kind of looming over them, right? I really liked it. The first story was a complete story, and it ended in a really bonkers, weird, wild way. And now we pick up right from that, and it's a great continuation. There was another one called Villains Seeking Hero, and it was another villain-type Focus spotlight, but it wasn't as good as Villain Takes All for me, but it was still pretty decent. It's a little bit more quirky. It's got an animated type feel to it, but it's about these villains and their secret organization, and it's about this one villain in particular. I think it's like Molecule, Mr. Molecule or something like that, and he's not doing so hot as a villain, so he gets reassigned to be the leader of the, the Fearsome Five or something like that, and he just gets stuck with these two schlubby uh, villains that he doesn't want to work with, and there's actually only three of them, and it's all kinds of bureaucracy, and it was a really interesting take on the typical comic book villain, so I thought that was neat. And then Cutman. Cutman was an interesting one. 
Cut Man's about this dude who finds out that he can't be hurt. He's almost immortal. So he goes and he gets in a car crash and he basically dies, but he comes back. Meanwhile, another poor sucker somewhere just randomly gets smushed to death. So it seems like he's able to be immortal and survive deaths, but it's like he passes it on to someone else. I really did like this one. It's got a really cool monochromatic coloring style, and I really did like the artwork on this one. Thought it was pretty cool. It's written by Alexander Banks Jogman with artwork by Robert Almond and lettering by DC Hopkins. But I really thought that was cool. So those are what I read this week. That's what I thought about it. Are you reading anything new digitally this week? Are you reading anything old school while you're shut down, quarantined away? What are you getting caught up on reading? What are you doing? Let us know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for checking out the video. I've been rocking Robbie Billups. Please do like, share, and subscribe and join us over at popculturephilosophers.com for podcasts and a whole lot more more. Thanks for rocking with us. Keep on reading.